Danielson of the Detroit Lions as the third-ranked passer in the NFC. Today, he'll face Ken Stone, the Cardinals' free safety who leads the National Football League in interceptions. He's got nine already. Jim Hart, the veteran quarterback of the Cardinals, today goes without his top receiver, Mel Gray, and he'll be facing the pressure from the NFL's leading soccer, Lions rookie Al Baker, who has 22 already this season. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Sony, which offers a full variety of innovative entertainment products. And by Hertz, the superstar in rent-a-car. From Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis, Missouri, CBS Sports presents the Detroit Lions and the St. Louis Cardinals. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Ryan with Nick Bonacani here at Bush Memorial Stadium. And, Nick, we've got two teams who had their troubles at the beginning of the year. They've come on well these past few weeks. I tell you, the offensive line of the Cardinals really has its work cut out for them because the Lions already have recorded 48 sacks, Al Baker 22. I understand that Jim Hart has taken out Keith Wortman, the offensive tackle, for dinner every day this week because <laughs> he'd like to stay healthy. <laughs> well, Al Baker, we know, will be coming at him. And, of course, the... The uh, Lions with a real strong defense, and the Cardinals with injuries to Mel Gray and Wayne Morris, their running back, is now on injured reserve. And we're ready now for the kickoff here at Bush Memorial Stadium. Our referee is Red Cashian today, and the Cardinals are to our left in white. They will receive, and the Detroit Lions to our right in blue will be kicking it off, and it'll be Benny Ricardo, number one, the kicker, and the deep man is a newcomer, Ted Farmer, number 28, along with Gordon Bell, number 20, for the Cardinals, and we're underway. It's taken by Gordon Bell, and Bell gets over the 30. He's got some running room out to the 40-yard line. Benny Ricardo, the kicker, the man to put the stop on him. So uh, Bell nearly breaking one here on the opening kickoff. Offensively for the St. Louis Cardinals, the front looks like this, one of the best in the league. Wartman and Deardorff are the tackles. The guards are Young and Steve, and the center is Tom Banks. The wide receivers will be Dave Steep for the injured Mel Gray, along with Pat Tilly, and the tight end is Al Chandler. It'll be Jim Hart at quarterback with Steve Jones, the running back who has the ball on this first down carry. He is number 34, and Jim Otis is number 35, joining Jones at running back. Jones, of course, replacing Wayne Morris, who was placed on injured reserve this past week because of a knee injury, and he was the leading Cardinal rusher, 631 yards, and the only man to go over 100 in a game this year for St. Louis. So he will be missed, and the man to replace him is Steve Jones, who comes into the game with 290 yards rushing. It'll be second and six for the St. Louis Cardinals. And they shift the tight end Eason Ramson, number 80, up to the right side. They give us to Jones again. And he got just back to the line of scrimmage before he was stacked up in the middle of that line by Al Baker, number 60. And Baker is joined by Dave Purifoy at the left end. The tackles are Woodcock and English. The linebackers for the Detroit Lions, it'll be Dave Washington starting for the injured Paul Newmoff along with O'Neill and Weaver. And the secondary has Williams and Bradley on the corners, Jimmy Allen and Mike Burns at safety. First passing situation of the game, Tim. Let's see if it happens. Third and about four. Ball at the 44-yard line at St. Louis. Hart has time, and it is incomplete. Over the head of the intended receiver, Al Chandler, the tight end, number 87. O'Neill was there on the coverage, and so the Cardinals will have to punt. On that particular formation, one thing we did see, which is a little unusual, they had a flex formation, which means they split the wide receiver and the tight end out. They're looking to throw the ball completed fast. Hart took a very shallow drop that time. He wanted to get rid of the ball in a hurry. Luther Blue and Tony Leonard, a new acquisition for the Lions, are the receivers, and the punter will be Mike Wood, number 19. He's standing at his 30-yard line. Wood acquired from Minnesota after an injury to top draft choice Steve Little. He's been doing the punting. It's taken by Leonard, and Leonard is pulled down immediately by number 84, Dave Steep. And Steep, the wide receiver who uh, replaces Mel Gray because of Gray's ankle injury, down there quickly to make the stop. And so the Detroit Lions will start first down. And the ball is spotted right at their 20-yard line. And a very young offensive line, Baldishweiler, Brad Oates are the tackles. Elias and Bodine are the guards. And the center is Larry Thierry. 
The wide receivers, Luther Blue and Fred Scott. The tight end is David Hill. The running backs are Bussy and King, and the quarterback is Gary Danielson, who's done some kind of job since taking over as a top quarterback. A 40-yard punt for Mike Wood. First down, Detroit. Danielson throwing on first down. Play action. And it's incomplete. Looked like a busted pattern there, uh, Nick, as uh, there was nobody <laughs> out where he was looking. Well, it really wasn't. It was, they were looking for a screen pass, but uh, unfortunately, the Cardinal defense knew it was a screen. They all were around the ball. I really don't know who he threw to, but uh, through the open spaces. I thought he unloaded it rather intelligently. <laughs> Pollard and Zook are the defensive ends for the Cardinals with Mike Dawson as the nose tackle in the 3-4. The linebackers are Steve Niels and Mark Arneson outside, Williams and Carney inside. The secondary, Carl Allen and Roger Worley, the great veteran of the corners. Rookie Ken Green, along with Ken Stone, the league's leading interceptor. They shift into the I formation. Bussey is the deep back, and he has the ball. Bussey gets about three to make it third and about seven for the Detroit Lions. O'Neill was there, or pardon me, uh, Williams, number 55, and Dawson, number 73. Dexter Bussey definitely is a bread and ball uh, carrier for the uh, Lions. Horace King has a sore toe. The thing that bothers Monty Clark is not so much the running of King, but whether or not he can block defectively for Bussey on the running plays. That time, not so much. The Cardinals bring in Bob Bell, number 79, to make four down linemen, and Perry Smith comes in as an extra defensive back. Third down, the ball at the Lions 23-yard line. They need seven. Well, whistles and uh, possibly delay, I think, against the Lions. Took a little too long. Well, I think you can change the play once, maybe twice, but when you change it three times, <laughs> you're flirting with the clock. Well, Danielson uh, came out there, looked at those defenses, and did a little audibleizing, and uh, it cost him a delay of game penalty. Here's Red Cashin. Well, essentially, folks, we said the clock ran out. <laughs> So that backs him up five. It'll be third down and about 12. Ball inside the 20 at the 18 now. Danielson back quickly to throw. He's got time up the middle. They intended for Freddie Scott, number 87, incomplete. And so Detroit will have to punt on their first series. Lucky and in comes Tom Sklodany. Nick? Lucky Freddie Scott got his hand on that ball because Carl Allen was sitting right behind him. It would have been an interception for St. Louis. The last time these teams met was back in 1975, December of 75. The Cardinals won 24 to 13 up at Detroit. The deep man is Gordon Bell, number 20 for the Cardinals. Sklodany is standing on his two yard line. Is that the same Gordon Bell who used to be with the Giants? That is the same from the University of Michigan. Well traveled. Picked up a few weeks ago with all of the injuries the Cardinals have had. And this past week they lost Wayne Morris and Mel Gray is missing the game with an ankle injury. That's a lot of their offense gone. Good bounce for the Lions. Bell is going to let it roll, and it goes to the 30-yard line of the St. Louis Cardinals and spotted at the 29, and the Cardinals will start from there. And we have 12-14 remaining first period with the score. The Lions nothing and the Cardinals nothing. Introducing a new American road car. The all-new Ford LTD for 1979. With more passenger room, more driver convenience, more handling ease, and more window area than last year's LTD. More room inside to help provide road car comfort on long trips. A V8 engine standard to help provide road car power and acceleration for the long stretch. And for even tough city driving, more handling ease than last year. LTD, a road car to take you across town or across the country. This land is your land, this land is my land, from California to the New York Island. Ford LTD for 1979 in two-door, four-door, and wagon models. A new American road car, available now at Ford dealers across the country. Well, the Bengals doing it to the Atlanta Falcons 10 to 7 in the second period. Falcons looking for a playoff spot. Bengals out of it, of course. Well, they really need that game. Ooh. Look at this big one here. Green Bay ahead of Tampa Bay 10 to 7 in the second period, and the Packers are uh, struggling lately. And the Rams ahead of the Giants 10 7 in the second quarter. Rams can clinch their division with a victory there today. The Jets 
lead Baltimore seven to three in the first quarter. Baltimore really hurting with injuries. Miami and Washington Knicks old team leading Go the you Redskins Dolphins. Three nothing. <laughs> All right, a 52-yard punt by Skladani has St. Louis first down at their own 29. They shift the tight end out of the backfield to the right side. That is Chandler, number 87. Jones is the ball carrier. Flags are down. He has met right at the line of scrimmage and did not get much, if anything. And peeling off the Lions at the bottom of that pile, you can see number 59, Charlie Weaver, the first man to hit him. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals and the National Football League is prohibited. Timmy, I don't know if everybody knows this, but Jim Otis really severely injured his knee two weeks ago. Last week, he played very sparingly, but he did go into the ball game. Offsides, number 75 in the neutral zone before the snap. Credit that to Dave Purifoy. But anyways, what happened is I was talking to Jim earlier, and he said he's going to go as far as he can with that damaged knee. But with uh, Wade Morris out and with a damaged Otis in the backfield, really the bulk of the work is going to have to be done by Jones, number 34. Well, they come out with that tight end lined up, as you can see, in the backfield, and then they'll shift him out to whichever side, this time to the right. That is Chandler, the better blocker of the two tight ends. Otis carrying for the first time, flag down. Otis running hard, gets out to the 45-yard line. But a flag was down right at the line of scrimmage, so we'll see what the call is. Luther Bradley was over there, the cornerback number 27, and O'Neal number 55, the middle linebacker on the tackle. Well, I think big Bubba Baker was the one who went offside. He uh, jumped a little early. If you hear Hart, the quarterback, you can hear the cadence. Let's listen to the official. Offside, number 60, in a neutral zone. Penalty is declined. First down. Okay, Bubba, do a little dance step. Cha-cha-cha, but you're offside. So it's first and 10, the Cardinals. Green Bay has now gone ahead of Tampa Bay 17 to 7 on a Barty Smith touchdown run. So it is first down, St. Louis at their own 45 yard line. Jones, another flag down. Jones got about two yards cutting back before Woodcock, number 77, got underneath him. And finishing him off, just getting up again, number 55, O'Neill. And another flag. Uh, thrown on the play and we've had a bunch of those already here early in the game there is no score Tim Ryan and Nick Bonacati at Bush Stadium in St. Louis I think that was Woodcock that time let's find out no wonder he made such a good defensive play well, we cannot hear Red Cashian uh, maybe our people in the truck can tell us whether they can hear him or not so uh, it was against the Lions already the Lions Woodcock. have four penalties Timmy early in the ball game so it's first and five, St. Louis, and they're now at midfield. In motion goes Tilly. Oh, he has it knocked fumble. out of his hands, and it is Detroit ball. A flag is down after the ball was recovered by Purifoy, and they knocked the ball out of Hart's hand. Let's see what the call is. And they're calling, looked like a roughing the passer signal. <laughs> And uh, looked like they just knocked the ball out of his hand. Isn't that the way you saw it? <laughs> Did you say roughing the passer? <laughs> I, I, I think he had the football in his hand. I don't, well, I don't understand it. Up. I, don't, I understand don't understand it either. This. We've got to find out. Batting the ball in possession, number 77. Is that called a dribble? Batting the ball. <laughs> Let's watch it again. Hard setting up and... He sets up deep this time. They're, you know, it looks like he has good pass protection because they're doubling up on Al Baker. And off from the right, Purifoy comes and, and hits them. Now let's see what they mean by batting the ball. I don't know what they mean by batting the ball. I don't understand that one. Uh, Anyways, it's a break for the Cardinals. It certainly <laughs> is. First down St. Louis at the 35-yard line of Detroit. In motion comes Tilly back toward the ball, and the give is right up the middle. Steve Jones, a big hole. Hard running inside the 25 to the 24 of Detroit. Steve Jones before Charlie Weaver finally stopped him number 59. We're going to go back to this batting the ball call, whatever that is. Maybe you can't slap the ball when you come in pure for number 75 hits the ball. 
Now, maybe that's a penalty. I guess maybe you can't slap at the ball. Well, except they called it uh, they called it against Woodcock, and it was clearly Purifoy made the play, and uh, that would appear to me to be uh, strictly knocking the ball out of uh, an offensive player's hands, which would uh, normally be a, a fumble. But we'll have to get a clarification on that, and apologies for not uh, understanding it any better than we do. We have one of the uh, head of the officials here today, Jack Reeder. Timmy, maybe we can impose on him sometime to give us an interpretation of that rule. All right, a gain of a yard by the Lions, and they're now down by the Cardinals. Are down to the 22-yard line of the Lions. Second and let's call it about a yard and a half. Second down and eight and a half to go for the Cardinals. Tight end Chandler goes to the left side. They give us to Jones, and Jones with Purifoy tackling him from behind dives to about the 17-yard line. And the Cardinals keep it moving here on their second offensive series of the game. 10-25 remaining first quarter at Bush Stadium. There is no score. Lions have had 35 yards in penalties so far, and uh, we've played uh, only five minutes of the game. You want to project that out to the end of the game? <laughs> <laughs> I hate to even contemplate that. Minnesota and Philadelphia are tied 7-7 seven seven in the first quarter of their game. Big one. Hart to throw, flag down, it's complete. The tight end Chandler knocked out of bounds at the six yard line. On the coverage, Mike Burns, number 29. Let's see what this flag is about. They're gonna call Tilly in motion. He went towards the line of scrimmage a little too early. Let's find out. Well, holding against them. Motion against the Cardinals. There were two calls that time, Timmy. Holding an illegal procedure, and I assume they'll take the illegal, I mean the holding penalty, which is a 10-yarder. They're talking it over with the Lions at the moment, and uh, they'll start to march it off. Well, I counted more than 10 yards, but <laughs> he knows. Number 83 of the offense turned up field too quick. That penalty is declined. Number 68 of the offense was holding. That's in first, 10 yards. Well, you called it exactly right, Nick Bonaconti. You saw, you saw Tilly with his infraction, which was declined. There he is. And then the uh, holding call was against Terry Steve. Now, well, Pack, as we mentioned uh, not long ago, leading Tampa Bay now 17 to seven. Third down, the Cardinals. The ball at the 27 yard line of Detroit following the penalty. Third and about 14, Hart with time. Up the middle, intended for Chandler, intercepted. It is number 40, Jimmy Allen. And Allen gets out to the 30 yard line of Detroit. A good return and Hart threw that way behind Chandler. And Allen just standing there uh, had it come right to him. Boy, and cre credit Luther Bradley on this one because he stuck right with Tilly all the way Orson Hart to deliver the interception. Uh-oh, that TV show we want to watch goes on in five minutes. America, stop rushing your life away just to catch a TV show. Get a Sony Betamax video recorder and automatically videotape that show while you're doing something else and watch it anytime you want. Sony Betamax, it could change your whole way of life. guys that do commercials for light beer for Miller are big stars and guys like that. Me? I'm just a humble bartender. But I drink light too. And I'll tell you why. It's less filling, it's got a third less calories than a regular beer, and it tastes great. Jerry, now that you're a big star, can I have your autograph? Well, sure, Mr. Dangerfield. Hey, would you like mine? Not really. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. How about my initials? Monday, the White Shadow tries to help a star player beat alcoholism. What makes you such an expert? My father was an alcoholic. Win with the White Shadow, Monday night. Well, the new look CBS Sports Spectacular 79 will begin at the start of 1979, as you might expect. And among the features you'll see will be the fight of the week in the Hollywood stunt competition and many more. The fight of the feet 
the fight of the week will feature top ranked fighters slugging it out and uh, at least once a month we'll have a, a big uh, important fight for you and we're looking forward to bringing that to you on the new look CBS Sports Spectacular 1979. Uh, who's going to host that show, that, that fight spectacular? Well, of course, Dick Stockton is the host of Sports Spectacular, but yes, you'll be seeing me around that boxing stuff, Nick. First down, Lions at the 30-yard line. Bussy and King, the running backs, and they shift to the right side. Horace King, loose ball. A scramble for it, and let's see who got this one. The Lions recover. The Lions recover. Horace King. The ball carrier, and they are just coming off the interception by Allen. Nearly turned it right back to the Cardinals. Turns into a two-yard gain, nearly three. Question is, is Horace King down before the ball spurts out? He's down on the ground. Then the ball seemed to spurt out. But anyways, they did recover their own fumble. King is a little uh, embarrassment. King is bothered by a turf toe. There was some question whether he would uh, be able to start today, but uh, he made the start and uh, wants to play today and he's out there seven to seven Philadelphia and Minnesota Ron Jaworski just passing to Harold Carmichael to tie that game up after Tarkenton had passed to Sammy White for the Minnesota score Bussey and King the running back second and seven the Lions at their own 33 yard line in motion comes Luther Blue behind the ball King flag down hit right at the line of scrimmage number 55 Eric Williams the linebacker slashing in from the 3-4 defense to make the stop. Boy, this is how you like to see a linebacker hit. Now look at his pursuit. He's keeping his shoulders square to the line so he can turn up the field and delivers a devastating blow to King. I love that. Yeah, you love it, Absolutely. don't you, Bonacani? Connie Ooh. reminds you of when you were younger. We have seen a lot of yellow out here today. Here's Red Cashin, the referee, with an offside call against the St. Louis Cardinals. Miami leading Washington six to nothing at halftime. It's a big day for the ball-headed Armenian, Garo Yupremian, <laughs> the kicker. It is second and two for the Lions coming out of their own zone following the Jimmy Allen interception. In motion is Luther Blue number 89. This is Dexter Bussey away from one tackle and short of the first down it appeared. First guy to hit him was Bob Pollard, number 82, the defensive end, along with Dawson, the nose tackle, 73. But Eric Williams, number 55, is letting his presence be known. Even on that play, he was penetrating across the line of scrimmage and slowed up Bussy. They like him anyways. He, they figure he's going to be a, a real fine linebacker. Ron Yankowski comes into the game to make a four-man front. Carney comes out, the linebacker, number 56. Third and one, the Lions at their own 39. Danielson deep on the fake. His receiver stumbled David Hill, and it's intercepted by Carl Allen, number 27. Way down at the 15-yard line, however, another flag is down. Back at the line at scrimmage. That's offside the Cardinals. I love to see that play, though, on third and one, going no. for the bomb. No, but they're calling motion on the Lions. It's called against the Lions, and so the interception will stand, and it's Carl Allen, number 27, coming up with it. Here's Red Cash. The offense, offsides, penalty is declined, first down. It was David Hill, the tight end, the intended receiver who was offside. Doesn't. Did you see that? Too? I did not see it. That's why I hesitated here. Did you see it, fans? These are two of today's newest razors. The one on the right is the new Norelco Rotary Razor. This one has two blades. The new Norelco 36. This one pivots up and down. The new Norelco has three adjustable heads that float and a new shaving angle. Both give you a close shave, but there is one thing they offer that Norelco doesn't. Gotcha. The new Norelco Rotary Razor. Very close, but no gotcha. Introducing Hertz Takeoff Rates. Save up to 35% on the average weekday rental when you take off Thursday through Sunday for a minimum of two to three days. Take off in a subcompact for only $13.95 a day. Fairmont's $15.95. Granada's $17.95. Thunderbird's $21.95 a day. 
all with no charge for mileage. There are some restrictions, so check with Hertz. Take off next weekend with Hertz low takeoff rates. Well, Nick, he did not move, but you can see that David Hill is lined up offside. On the nearest man to you, on the end of the line, David Hill's got his hand ahead of the ball, and so he is the guilty man offside. And uh, he stumbled downfield on his pass pattern, and the ball came right into Carl Allen's hands. And so the Cardinals have it, where Allen intercepted first down at their 11-yard line, at the 16-yard uh, line, pardon me. Steve Jones. Getting out to about the 19. And Jones figures to get a lot of work today with Wayne Morris hurt and Jim Otis playing hurt. Morris gone to injured reserve. Dave Purifoy on the tackle. Gain of three, second and seven. Jones has 25 yards rushing and five carries so far for the Cardinals. We are still scoreless, having had two interceptions so far. Allen for the Lions and Allen for the Cardinals. Jimmy Allen for Detroit, Carl Allen for St. Louis. In motion is Tilly. Hart intended for Tilly, what a catch, a diving grab by Pat Tilly. Bradley on the coverage. They're really in a flex defense and Tilly, all he comes down and runs away from Luther Bradley here. Bradley really had good coverage on him. They're saying that Bradley, number 27, the rookie out of our alma mater, Timmy Notre Dame has been playing bump and run very well the whole season. So Tilly will really have his work cut off from trying to elude Bradley. Well, that's the first pass completion of the game by either quarterback. Hart to Tilly, who made an outstanding catch. And Tilly has had 52 catches on the season. He leads the wide receivers in the National Football Conference in that department. He's number three overall behind a couple of running backs. Third and five. Jones, hard running. Gets out to the 29-yard line, and that'll be good for a Cardinal first down, provided there are no flags down. We have had a bunch of those already. But this is a good play, and it's first down St. Louis. Jimmy Allen, number 40, hard-hitting safety for the Lions, made the tackle. Looks like he belonged to the high hurdles team on that one, jumping over Woodcock, the defensive tackle, in order to make that first down. We'll be looking to see if Ken Stone, the NFC's or the NFL's leading interceptor, comes back into the game, apparently suffered a back spasm, and we're not sure that he's gonna be able to continue in the Cardinals secondary today. He would be missed. First down, St. Louis. That's Jim Otis, he's hit in the backfield, another flag down. Weaver was there and Al Baker was there, number 60, the rookie from Colorado. And Gary Weaver, the veteran linebacker, number 59. Well, Floyd Peters, the defensive coach for the Lions, is not gonna be too happy on Monday morning when they review these films because the defensive line has been jumping off. What Hart is doing, it's a, a very stunted cadence, and we'll tell you that in a minute. Well, we won't tell you that. <laughs> well, we cannot hear him, we and can't I, hear I'm him. not sure. Can, uh, can our... Uh, uh, all right, that, uh, we're just talking to our producer here and our director, Marvin Muse, and our producer, Howard Reisner, just to find out if you people at home are hearing the referee when we are not, and evidently you are not. <laughs> The tight end, Chandler, moves up to the right side. And this is Jim Otis squirming out near the first down, but I think he'll be short. Purifoy, number 75, on the tackle. One thing about Otis, you know he will give you whatever he has left in him. A nice trap block. Number 64, Bob Young springing it for Otis which brings up a second and one, and Otis does have a legitimately bad knee, but he'll play, he'll play as long as he can. Otis, nine-year man from Ohio State, came into the game with 541 yards rushing. That was behind Wayne Morris' 631, but Morris, as we mentioned, gone for the remainder of the season with a knee injury. Otis again, going for the first down. It's not often you stop him short of one yard. He's got it and then some. Out near the 45-yard line of St. Louis, Baker and Woodcock combine on the tackle, 60 and 77. Timmy, what happens when the cadence of Hart, what he's doing is he's alternating his cadence. He's going hut, 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 and what he's doing, he's pulling the defensive line of the Lions off their normal stance. So when the offensive line charges out after them, they're not set, and that's why they're able to run on them. All right, Nick, that's uh, been a factor here, certainly uh, in the Cardinals' running game in this first quarter. They moved it pretty well so far. 
Lions is so tough defensively against Denver last Thursday. Hart, draw play, Otis. Otis this time stacked up after a gain of maybe a yard or two at the most. And the first man to hit him, Doug English, number 78, and then the linebacker, O'Neill, number 55, getting in on it. Lions a year ago, a five and eight season. The Cardinals were, or a six and eight season, pardon me. The Cardinals were seven and seven, and the Lions currently five and eight, and they have been a much improved football team over these last several weeks. You know, it's amazing the productivity that they're getting out of their offense today, considering Wayne Morris and Mel Greer out of the lineup. Second and eight. Otis gets away from one tackler and then slips on the artificial turf and goes down at the 45-yard line right near the line of scrimmage. Ed O'Neill, number 55, doing the job. Well, coming up on CBS, we've got some college football action for you. The Sun Bowl on Saturday, December 23rd at 1.30 Eastern time. It'll be Maryland, a 9-2 record, the runner-up in the Atlantic Coast Conference against Texas. And Texas, one of the great teams every season in college football, and you'll see it at 1.30 Eastern time, Saturday, December 23rd. Third I'll down. be there with my whole family, Timothy. All right, El Paso, Texas, should be fun. Tilly in motion, back toward the ball. Hart with time up the middle, intended for Jones, incomplete. The ball a little high, good coverage by Charlie Weaver, number 59, the linebacker. And that brings up fourth down. One, one thing you, you don't like to do as a receiver, has the ball thrown high to you with a middle linebacker sitting behind you waiting to put the wraps. Watch Charlie Weaver react to the football here right through Jones. And Jones comes back to the huddle and said, Jim, what did I do to you this week? <laughs> So it's a punting situation for the St. Louis Cardinals. It is Mike Wood, number 19, and the deep man is Tony Leonard, acquired recently by the Lions from the San Francisco 49ers. Defensive back and punt returner. Leonard coming up, takes it on the fly, tripped over his own man at the 27-yard line, or he might have had a little bit of running room there. Tony Leonard is dropped at the 27, maybe the 28-yard line of St. Louis. And so we have 3.51 remaining here in the first quarter with the score, the Detroit Lions nothing and the Cardinals nothing. When you shoot a lot of pool and bars, you want to stay fast and loose, and you don't want to get filled up. That's why I drink light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and it's less filling. Plus, the taste is great. And even though a lot of people don't think pool is strenuous, let me tell you something. You can work up a real good thirst, even when you're just showing off. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. All across the country, Sears is helping get ready for Christmas. And now Sears helps you with a Craftsman tool sale. This 7-inch circuitor saw with motor that develops a maximum 1 and 2 thirds horsepower. This variable speed saver saw with screwer knob. The Craftsman dual motion pad sander with built-in dust pickup. And variable speed reversible 3 8 inch drill. Just $34.99 each. All across the country, Sears comes home for Christmas. Coming next, see top touring pros in the Mixed Team Championship of Golf. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Well, there's Monty Clark dressed in his basic work clothes, Tim. <laughs> and warm ones, too, Warm today. ones, yes. And Bud Wilkinson looked like he's going out to a very formal dinner. Well, long, long coat, gray gloves. Uh, apparently got a, uh, a lucky suit to the four Cardinal victories, which they won in succession. He had the same gray suit on. It looks like he's wearing a gray suit again today. Luther Blue in motion. And uh, right at the line of scrimmage, number 73, the nose tackle, Dawson, does the job on Dexter Bussey. So that there is no gain. In fact, we'll call it a loss of a half yard. That's what you say, uh, Larry Terry, the center, Kind of missed this block on Dawson. Ball at the 27-yard line, following a 30-yard punt by St. Louis's Mike Wood, and it'll be second and about 10 and a half for the car for the Lions at their own 27. Blitzing situation for the Cardinals. They like to send their linebackers on second and long. Danielson wants to throw. 
complete. Freddie Scott hit immediately by number 27, Carl Allen, the cornerback. First down, Lions, all the way out to their 43-yard line. All Scott did on this play is come down, try to find the open spot in the zone. The linebackers didn't get quite enough of a drop to help out the cornerback, Allen, therefore allowing Scott right there. See, just an open spot in the zone, allowing the reception. Good pass play, Danielson to Fred Scott, 16-yard gain. First well, down, Lions. Those cornerbacks are on an island out there all by themselves, and they look to those linebackers to help. You can see the Vikings have gone ahead of the Eagles 14 to 7. Play action. Danielson deep drop. Screen pass, and that's incomplete. That looked like that first try by him on the screen early in the game. The intended receiver was Bussy, who had not even made his uh, turn to look back for the ball yet. Well, what they're trying to do, Tim, is take advantage of the blitzing linebackers. Again, they feel this is how they're going to try and get the pressure. There they are, the Chiefs out ahead of the Bills. Chuck Knox not too happy. But anyways, that's the second time they've tried it, the screen pass, and the second time it looked like an aborted play. Second down, ball at the 43 of the Detroit Lions. They're in possession with 2.23 remaining first period. There is still no score. Sideliner for Blue incomplete. Danielson just overthrew that, and just while we have a chance, let's go back over that rather odd call. I have not seen that uh, call before. It was Dave Purifoy who batted the ball out of Jim Hart's hands, and the rule, which I have uh, right in front of me here, uh, says that while a runner is in possession, defensive player bats or kicks the ball away from him. It is not a fumble, but a foul. So you cannot bat or kick it away. They called it on Woodcock. That was a mistake. It was Purifoy, but the call was correct. He batted the ball out of Hart's hands, and while you might expect that should be a fumble, the rule book says otherwise. Third down and sacked is Gary Danielson, barreling in number 73, Dawson. And 37, Ken Green, the strong safety. If you want to see the whole world come in on Gary Danielson, you'll see it now. Linemen, linebackers, defensive backs, they all join the crowd, and Danielson goes down for a big loss. Dawson and Kenny Green, the rookie Green, the number two pick by the Cardinals from Washington State. Been a starter all season, been doing the job. Sledaney standing on his 16-yard line. The deep man is Gordon Bell for St. Louis. Sledaney to Bell, it takes it on the fly at the 35. Flags are down, he gets over the 45 to the 46-yard line. Definite clipping call, Tim. Definite clipping call. The one I'm, I'm a little confused at, this, this official over here, way down the field, made the call. Officials who watched it didn't make the call. But Now well, let's see what uh, the referee, Red Cashin, comes up with. I'm not sure we can hear him here. Well, it's pushing on the Cardinals one way or the other. I wasn't sure what player did the pushing, but it's a 15-yard penalty anyways. The illegal use of hands. Scaldini only got off a 33-yard punt. Number 27 of the receivers, illegal use of the hands during the run back. Well, the referee's microphone working rather well that time, and you heard the call, and so it'll be first down Cardinals back at their 25. Tonight on CBS, 60 minutes will feature some Teamsters who are taking on their own union, a tough confrontation any way you look at it. Then comedy takes over as Edith is arrested for passing counterfeit money on All in the Family. That's followed by Alice, Kaz, and Dallas. Tonight's lineup on CBS. First down, Cardinals. Hart wants to throw. Up the middle and incomplete. Intended for Willard Harrell in the game for the first time today, number 39 at running back. Took a pretty good shot just as the ball arrived. It'll be second and 10. Well, he has ginger legs anyways today. I mean, he's supposed to be hurt, so he's playing on a little courage out there. Harrell comes limping well. to the sidelines right now. He has an ankle injury, and Gordon Bell has gone in to replace him. So the Cardinals really suffering in the offensive department with Wayne Morris gone. Otis is playing hurt. Harrell's playing hurt. Mel Gray out of action with an ankle injury. Right now it's Jones and Gordon Bell at running back. And it's Steve Jones, the only real healthy running back they have among the regulars. 
He got to the line of scrimmage before John Woodcock, number 77, straightened him up. And so the running attack that was going rather well for the Cardinals, Nick, uh, now uh, they're having their problems as the Lions have shut it down. Well, Jim Otis, you know, the steady fullback, is not even playing. So now that they have Gordon Bell, who hasn't played much this year, and relying on Steve Jones, really has only run 83 times for 290 yards the entire year. So not much production there. Hart to throw. Sideliner and incomplete. Intended for Steve Jones. You know, Monty Clark said uh, Hart's a timing type passer. And without Gray uh, today as a top receiver and uh, one of his threats, of course, uh, Tilly is really the guy who's caught most of the passes, but Gray's the deep threat. With him out of there, uh, they wanted to put pressure on Hart. Just uh, even if they didn't sack him, just keep him coming and make him throw the ball before he wants to, and that might have been a sample of it there. So it's fourth down for St. Louis. Leonard is the deep man. Wood is standing on his 10-yard line awaiting the snap. Leonard, the deep man at the Detroit 43-yard line. Good punt. Drives him back to the 28-yard line. He backs up to the 25. Nowhere to go, and Leonard is dropped at the 24-yard line. Outstanding punt by Mike Wood. Well, we mentioned the Sun Bowl. We've also got the Peach Bowl for you on CBS. Purdue from the Big Ten with an 8-2-1 record against Georgia Tech, 7-4. They lost to Georgia by a point in the thriller yesterday, and so that'll be the Peach Bowl from Atlanta on Christmas Day at 1 p.m. Eastern time here on CBS. Georgia Tech has a running back named Eddie Lee Ivory who will be a number one draft choice for sure. Gary Danielson brings the Lions out first down at their own 25-yard line. Dexter Bussey over the 30 for a gain of five. He's pulled down by number 57, Mark Arneson. And there is Bud Wilkinson. Dashing, debonair, collective on the sideline. Gray hair, a little like you. Oh, no, you don't have too much, Jim. That's for sure. I got less than you, and I'm older, not by much. Bud Wilkinson feeling a little better these days after such a difficult start. His rookie season in the National Football League after his outstanding college career, but his Cardinals went out and won four in a row for him before losing to Philadelphia last week. This is Bussey. Bussey shakes off tacklers and has a first down. Flags are down again. He has the first down yardage. We'll have to wait and see who the infraction is against. Good running by Dexter Bussey. Bussey coming into the game with 772 yards. Let's see if we see. I think it's a face masking here. Let's, let's watch. Number 24, Bussey with the football. Let's see number 50. There yes. we go. Bring him down, Niels. Steve Niels, <laughs> number 53. Steve Niels. Number 53 of the defense grabbing the face mask. There we go. First down. Hook em horns. <laughs> <laughs> well, they call it grasping the face mask, which is a lesser penalty once you, if you let go. Less chance of injury, obviously. I, I wonder if, if it hurts on. any less. Well, <laughs> it didn't look like he really jerked him around too much there. So it's first down, Lions. They're at their own 41. Play action. Danielson, a deep drop. Up the middle, intercepted. Almost dropped, but it's hung on to by Carney. Tim Carney. And he gets back to the 46-yard line of the Lions. Kathy, what are you doing in the dark? Waiting for Santa. Ho, ho, ho. I wonder what he'll bring me. Well, have you been a good little girl? Person. Good little person. Hey, person. Merry Christmas. Oh, I was dreaming. Make a dream come true this Christmas. From Christmas Dreams Diamond Collection 79. Tough Ford Trucks, America's best-selling truck line. Ford Tough. Tough Couriers and Tough Pickups. Tough Four-Wheelers and Broncos. 
and tough vans. Tough big trucks, tough Ford trucks. America's best-selling truck line. Who's America's greatest band leader? America's greatest band leader is Spidell. Spidell. America's greatest band leader is Spidell. Spidell. Spidell's elegant new band leader is Thin Line 2, the thinnest twist of flex ever. It'll make your old watch look new or your new watch look better. America's greatest band leader is Spidell. Tim Ryan and Nick Bonacati at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. And uh, this game so far has featured more penalties than anything else. We've had nine altogether, five to Detroit for 35 yards, four to the Cardinals for 30 yards. And we've had three interceptions already, two by the Cardinals, one by Detroit. And the interception by Carney has St. Louis first down at the Lions' 46-yard line. Slot formation left for the Cardinals. Steve Jones, number 34, good hold. And Jones gets in near the 36-yard line of Detroit. Pulled down from behind by number 52, Dave Washington. And Weaver got in on the action as well. A good run like that, you could look for a good block by Willard Harrell, the running back who is blocking for Jones on that play. One thing you can say about the offensive line of the Cardinals the entire year is that it has been solid. That's been the real strong point of the Cardinal team. Second and less than a yard. For the Cardinals, Harrell is in at running back along with Jones. And Harrell now jumps over to the left side in the set. Jones again. Jones has the first down inside the 35 to the 33. Doug English, number 78, made the tackle. Now let's watch Doug English, defensive tackle, fighting through the block, coming over, making the play on Jones. English has been a good player all year for Monty Clark. He has four sacks versus the Broncos on that Thanksgiving day alone. He has six for the season, so he's been a real stalwart for the defensive line of the Lions. Look at this, it's tied up at 14-14, and uh, Tarkenton has passed twice to Sammy White for touchdowns. Jaworski has passed twice to Harold Carmichael for touchdowns in that game. First down here, St. Louis. Willard Harrell straight ahead to the 32-yard line. Woodcock, number 77, and O'Neill, number 55, on the tackle there. As a middle linebacker, when the defensive line is taking off as much as the Lions' defensive line does, a lot of pressure is on that middle linebacker because now he has to fill in the holes vacated by the defensive lineman. O'Neill did it real well on that play. So a gain of about three at second and seven for the St. Louis Cardinals, and Otis apparently is bothered by that knee injury that Nick Bonacanti referred to early in the game. They do hope to get him back in, however. Right now, it's Jones and Harrell in there. Hart looking to throw. Shakes off one man, and it's complete to number 84, Dave Steep. And Steep gets down to the 12-yard line of the Lions before Jimmy Allen, the safety number 40, put the tackle on him. Well, actually, they're looking for Tilly, number 83, but he's blanketed in again by Bradley. Now, watch the play. Baker has his hands on Hart, but Hart steps up and hits Steep. This is a big catch for a rookie, because last week, Steve in the game against the Eagles muffed the ball into the waiting arms of Bill Berge that cost the Cardinals the game. So that's a big catch for Steve as a rookie. Dave Steve from Portland State getting the start for the injured Mel Gray. San Francisco and New Orleans. Saints leading that one 10 to three. First down, Cardinals threatening here. This is Steve Jones with a good hole, and he's in for the touchdown. Steve Jones, number 34, good blocking by the center banks and the right guard, Terry Steve. So the Cardinals open the scoring. What a hole. Watch this hole. Good block by Deerdorf. Just wiped off the entire left side of the line, leading, allowing Jones to sprint into the end zone. Deerdorf, all pro for how many years? Oh, every year. Both of the most he outstanding the offensive linemen two years in a row. He deserves it. Eight-year man from Michigan. Jim Bakken will attempt the point after. And it's good. So we have 12.04 remaining here in the first half with the score. The St. Louis Cardinals, seven, and the Detroit Lions, nothing. 
know for too long now, bowlers have been left out of light beer commercials. And football players have been grabbing all the glory. But bowlers know light beer from Miller tastes great. We know light's got a third less calories than the regular beer. We know light's less filling. Bowlers love light just as much as football players. That's right. And we also love the easy opening can. You <laughs> sure do. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. This is the world's most revolutionary telephone switching invention. We call it Super Switcher. It handles four times more calls and may save us a billion dollars a year. Just imagine that each of these cars is a long distance call. Super Switcher could handle five days traffic on a busy LA freeway. That ought to prevent traffic jams on your long distance calls. Bell System Technology, keeping your phone system the best in the world. Well, Wednesday night on CBS, only Scrooge could grouse about our offerings, uh, leading the way the old Christmas favorite Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And then you're invited to share the unforgettable, unforgettable memories conjured up by Bing Crosby and the Christmas years, an enchanting hour with the one and only Bing, his family, and guest stars. Johnny Cash tops off the evening with his Yuletide special. That's Wednesday here on CBS. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Not bad, not huh? bad, Nick. I'll have you uh, open the show. Mike Wood will kick it off for the Cardinals. Taken at the 14-yard line by Rick Kane. And Kane, running hard, gets over the 30-yard line to the 32 of Detroit before he's stopped there by Perry Smith, number 45. Look at those Dolphins, 13 to nothing over Washington. A real important game for both teams. Miami two games behind New England. Washington looking for a wild card spot. The Dolphins also looking for that wild card spot. So a big game in Washington. An 18 yard return for Rick Kane. First down Detroit, they trail seven to nothing. The interception by Carney led to the St. Louis touchdown. Horace King behind the left guard and the left tackle. And it is Dawson and Carney putting the stop on him. He got about four, let's call it second and six. And it's chilly here in St. Louis. You can see Gary Danielson trying to keep his hands warm inside his jersey pockets. That's because he plays in the luxury of the Silver Dome <laughs> in Pontiac, right. Michigan, where it's 72 degrees. Uh, we'll be there for the final season game against San Francisco, and I'll be glad to be indoors that day. Second down, eight to go. In motion is Luther Blue. Danielson, sideliner for Blue, complete. He goes out of bounds at the 44-yard line. And that's a first down for Detroit. Uh, the coverage was Perry Smith. All this is is an out pattern by Blue. And again, the linebacker does not get outside to give the cornerback help. And we keep referring to this because what happens is the linebacker, the strong safety, has to help that cornerback because he's on an island out there all by himself. They say, okay, go out there and cover deep, cover short, cover inside, and cover outside. <laughs> That's not much. That's not much to ask, <laughs> to ask of course. Ten-yard gain, first down, Lions. Moving out of their own zone. Danielson, quick pass, sideliner, and incomplete intended for Freddie Scott, number 87. On the coverage was Roger Worley, number 22. And Ken Stone so far has not come back into the game at free safety for the Cardinals. And uh, boy, uh, they really don't need any more injuries. We've mentioned uh, already that Otis and Wayne Morris and Mel Gray all hurt. Otis is in the locker room at this moment, bothered by his bad knee. Morris gone to the injured reserve with a knee injury, placed on injured reserve Friday. Second down, Detroit. They trail seven to nothing. This is Dexter Bussy. Bussy. Got about a yard before he was hit hard by the outside linebacker, Steve Niels, number 53. Well, excellent play by Niels on that one. What he did is he strung the play out, preventing it from getting outside, then stuffed the blocker back inside to make the tackle. So far on the day, day Danielson is two for nine for a total of 26 yards and two interceptions. Rick Kane comes into the game, replacing Bussy for the Lions. You didn't acknowledge what I just said. <laughs> Two for nine. Well, I mean, I didn't want to emphasize it. Gary's not off to a great start. It's a long way to go, however. Third down. Almost 10 to go. Horace King. Big hole, and he has the first down. Good running. 
by King. He got a great hole at the point of attack, and then he picked up an extra five or six on his own, shaking off one Cardinal tackler. Let's watch it again. Let's go to the pits and watch the offensive line work against the defense. King finding a nice hole. Nails comes over and delivers a good block there. We have a little face masking that's not called, and King makes the first down. Hard running, an 11-yard gain for Horace King, and they're now at the 41-yard line of St. Louis, first down. That's their first third down conversion of the day for Detroit. Rick Kane, number 32, slashing off left tackle. Picked up close to five before Tim Carney, the right inside linebacker, put the tackle on him. Interesting, if you look at the backfield now, well, here comes Bussy back in. But at one time, none of this, the starting backs who started the game were playing. That, that was Otis, and that was Jones, and then there was Bussy and King, and neither one of those guys were playing. But Bussy is back in the lineup. Now we'll call it a four-yard gain, a little more than that, second and six. New Orleans leading San Francisco 17-3 to three with 5.50 left in the half there. This is Bussy trying to come wide right, and the Cardinals shut him down. He got at the most a yard on the play. Mark Arneson coming from the right side, number 57 with good lateral pursuit, and Tim Carney, number 56, on the tackle. Eric Williams, number 55 again, Tim. You know, I keep talking about him because linebackers who make their impact against offensive teams are the ones that make things happen behind the line of scrimmage. That time he penetrated again, wiped out the blocking, and Bussy had no blocking in front of him. Is there any other reason you would be talking about linebackers, Nick? <laughs> Third down, about five. And there is your man. Williams, this time he makes the hit right at the line of scrimmage on Horace King. King driving got maybe a yard more, but it brings up fourth down. Williams wound up with the ball, but the play was already over. Eric Williams, number 55. Second year man from USC, an eighth round pick in 1977. Do we go for a field goal or do we punt the football? Well, that'd be a long field goal. The wind is in their favor. 50 yarder, 52 yarder. No, it's going to be a punt by Skladani. He's standing at midfield trying to keep his hands warm. The temperature dropped during the day. It was actually warmer early this morning than it is right now. The lights are on here under very gray skies in St. Louis, Missouri. Skladani angling. And let's see what kind of a hop he gets. Oh, what a dandy. It's going to roll dead at the four yard line of the St. Louis Cardinals. Fine punt by Tom Skladani. And the Cardinals will start from a hole at their own four with 7.36 remaining here in the first half and St. Louis leading it by a score of seven to nothing. Zenith announces a breakthrough. A breakthrough. System three. System three. The best Zenith ever. The best ever. A brand new picture tube for the sharpest Zenith picture ever. Sharpest picture. And an all new modular chassis. All new. Designed to be the best performing, the most reliable color TV in Zenith history. The most reliable. Zenith. System 3. Zenith. System 3. It's the best Zenith ever. Introducing Kmart 672, a powerful new car battery that's completely maintenance free. Hook the 672 to this electric winch, and it can pull this 44-ton diesel locomotive, the Kmart 672, packed with power to deliver surefire starts. If it can pull this 44-ton locomotive, you'd better believe it can start your car. Check it out at most Kmart automotive departments across the USA, where quality auto parts are Kmart priced.